Hello everyone. Welcome to Texila e-conference knowledge series. Thank you for joining today's webinar session. My name is Divya and I am the SEO analyst at Texila e-conference. Texila e-conference is the leader in organizing online conferences and has been helping entrepreneurs, marketers and professionals achieve their goals. Texila e-conference being an information hub has worked 300 course plus international speakers from top brands and shared other than knowledge to people across the globe. It has hosted eBay conferences from 2014 and has inspired people to exchange information on virtual platform. Today, we are going to learn about the impact of digital media on your personal brand presented by Mr. Sazanka Diaz, digital marketing enthusiast and independent consultant. Before we get started, I want to share a few operating instructions. Attendees, please check your audio settings to make sure the presentation is audible. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the chat box. You can also click the raise hand button at the top so that the presenter will get an alert. Now, without further delay, we will join the session with Mr. Sasanka Diaz. Sasanka Diaz is a Sri Lankan newsreader, TV personality, voiceover artist, digital media enthusiast, writer and customer experience professional, passionate on strategy, innovation, entrepreneurship, Sasanka has been in the Sri Lankan media industry for more than a decade and his entire media career spans almost two decades. His passion for digital media has enabled him to empower not only youth but the mature community via his personal brand. Welcome Mr. Sasanka Diaz. Thank you very much. Uh... Thanks for giving this opportunity, uh, Texila e-conference. The impact of digital media on your personal brand. Before we begin, let me introduce myself. I think uh, our representative from Texila introduced me. So I'm Sasanka Das. I've been in the Sri Lankan media industry for almost a decade. It spans, uh, the entire career spans about 20, uh, 20 years now. Uh, since I got into media, I created this passion for social media, which is the digital space, and it's the talk of the town and the way forward. So I reckon having a presence on digital media is an essential point, factor. Also, remember that having presence in digital media is not only an option, now it is a requirement. So I reckon the facts that I tell you today will be important for you in your march forward. Whether you're a digital marketer, a marketer, or a professional, presence on digital media is important. So let's move on with the presentation. So why do you need a personal brand? Why do you need a personal brand? That is what we need to discuss first before we talk about digital media. So you need a personal brand to create opportunities. When you create opportunities, you get the information, the related know-how, and also the related contacts to go where you want to go. And also you need a personal brand to grow your network. Growing your network can be talking to people personally, talking to people in the form of a webinar or online format and also you can write to people so these type of options are available when you have a personal brand so you have always strived to achieve what you want but when you have your personal brand established that is where you have the opportunity to go the extra mile and the next advantage of having a personal brand is you get to establish your credibility. So what do you mean by credibility? It can be your integrity. What is integrity? Integrity is doing a certain thing, doing a given task. Just imagine that someone is monitoring what you're doing. Sometimes he or she would not be monitoring what you're doing. You should be able to do it in the proper way even he or she is not monitoring what you're doing. So that is integrity. So with your personal brand, you can display that you're a credible entity 
to an organization, to a team, or any activity that you get involved in, you can display or showcase that you're a portion or a partner of credibility. So moving on, I asked, why do you need a personal brand? This picture that you see here has the answer for it. So this is from Hootsuite, uh, We Are Social, the source, digital around the world in 2018. So this sums up what we just discussed. So this is why you need a personal brand. You need a personal brand because of these reasons. So the total world population is close to 8 billion now, that is 7.593. So out of that, more than half, that is more than 4 billion are internet users. So this is the opportunity you have. Active social media users, more than 3 billion. Unique mobile users, more than 5 billion. Active mobile social users, mobile social users, close to 3 billion. So this is the opportunity that you have. So remember, we discussed about creating opportunities through your personal brand. So when you see this picture, you understand. I hope that uh, most of you have uh, seen this picture by now. This gives you a clear understanding why you need a personal brand. So moving forward, we need to learn how to create opportunities because we are living in an era in the next millisecond we change what we have learned now so we need to learn continuously for that we need opportunity so when you learn then you get more opportunities so how do you create opportunities first and foremost you need to understand what are your skills what are you good at that is up to you to understand what are your skills and next you have to understand what is your passion what you love so when you do what you love you have the opportunity to go the extra mile when you go the extra mile there is no traffic jam. So that's why you need to understand or identify what are your skills and what are your passions. So moving on, to create opportunities, you need to think global. You can study about the global brands which have been successful because we have enough and more sources to study about these things now. As digital marketers, you know about it. I, I think you know about it better than me. But First and foremost, the paramount important fact is that you need to think global. When you think global, your mindset changes to adapt according to whatever the change that is happening across the globe. Next, you need to change. You need to change your mindset. You need to change your behavior. You need to change your habits. You need to change the way you think and what else because change is an important factor when you're trying to create opportunities so always remember to create change in you so that automatically the other factors across the globe will change but first you need to change next we talk about learning in the previous slide i talked about learning so because learning is an important factor you never stop learning you have to always remember that what you know is a drop and what you don't know is an ocean. So when you have this mindset, you can learn anything. You are ready to learn anything. So you need to understand that learning, change and thinking global are three main factors in my experience to create opportunities. Now this is the most important part as far as I'm concerned in this presentation. Whatever you do, whichever profession you are in, you need to market yourself. Personal branding, in a nutshell, is about marketing yourself. All right, so first, you need to identify your niche. Identifying your niche means you have to understand what are your interests, what are your passions, what are your skills. And using them, you need to solve problems which occur across the globe. It can be a problem in your society, a problem in your community, a problem that one of your friends has. You, if you're a problem solver, that is the way forward. That is where innovation comes in. So when you identify your niche, you are able to market yourself through that. 
So the first step in identifying or marketing yourself is identifying a niche. You need to seek recognition for your expertise. That is, you need to write about what you know and get your name in front of the audience. You write what you know, your experience. Always remember, if you know something, don't keep it to yourself. You share it because someone, there is someone who will take use of it and utilize that knowledge accordingly. So that's why you need to seek recognition for your expertise. That is number two when marketing yourself. The next, you share your wisdom. What you need to do here is that if you have displayed generosity, it may be a good deed that you committed, can be uh, lending a helping hand to someone. But these things need to be spread across the world because you become an example by sharing your wisdom. You say, I did this, why can't you? So this is why you need to market yourself and using this factor, you can market yourself prolific by doing it. People register in their minds about yourself that you are a great character. The next, it's very important to build a community. You build a community of professionals, of artists, of whatever, you name it. So you build a community which aligns with your interests. And connecting deeply with them will help you to understand what are their problems. So as we discussed earlier, by identifying your niche, we talked about problem solving. So when you build a community, you talk to them and you find out their issues. So through innovation and what are your skills, what are your passion, you put them into one place and find a solution to the friend or the community that you are part of. And digital media is a great place to be of service to others because as we have seen daily on social media, there are emotional videos, emotional content of being a service, being of service to others. People serve others so that the audience knows about the character of this person, of the particular person. So you may be helping a stray dog on the road. Just imagine that it had met with an accident. So you help to take it off. So these type of uh, Leads can be captured on video, becomes content for digital marketers like you. And then by doing that, you are being of service to others. And the next important thing is to be social savvy. You need to spend time on social media tools such as Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, you name it. You know it better than me. So you need to be social savvy. Spend time on social media because when you spend time on social media, example, for example, if you take Twitter lists, are a great source of content to find problems that people are facing. So always be social savvy. Spend time on social media with a positive mindset so that you can solve other people's problems. That is very important. Being social savvy is quite important. So last, about how to market yourself in the digital space is who you are is the message to the world. So what you commit, what you do, can be good or bad, that is what you deliver to the world. So that is the message you deliver to the world, saying that, hey guys, so you need to understand character is important because character is a beautifier. Character is a factor that differentiates two people. So if we take examples, we have enough and more examples to quote, but this is not the time to get into that. So moving on, we know that as digital marketers, we know that using video is a fair amount of importance and that is the way forward because video people consume video content now that is it's a craze people are looking for videos people are waiting for 
YouTube channels or Facebook pages. Brands are always moving towards video and now it has become a trend that you can also use to go forward. So taking me as an example, I started a YouTube channel about a year ago. So this was actually, I got this thought. This, this is what I talked about. I thought that I need to do this video. So I got into action. I'll talk about uh, getting into action later. So what I did was, uh, you know, I'm, I live in Sri Lanka and in 2004, this unfortunate incident occurred where a tsunami struck the entire island. Uh, I think for most of the Asians were uh, griefed through that, that uh, tribu tribulation. So for me, I just thought to myself, that I need to do a tribute video for the tsunami victim. So this is how I started to get on video. So I just recorded a video with my smartphone and talked about the grief the people had gone through and uh, just recorded it and put it on YouTube. So once I started this, I got good response. About After about five or ten videos, I, get, I got great uh, response from the audience. So then they wanted me uh, to suggest a frequency that I post my video. So I actually wanted to post it weekly. Then I decided that I'm going to do it every week. So from then up to date, every Wednesday I post a video. You can, I will share my uh, social links at the end of the presentation. So you can just Get into it and watch the videos that I do. So it's all about influence, about influencing people. So that's what my forte is, but yours can be different. So you need to get on video, guys. That is very important, but all of you are already doing it, maybe. But if you're not, get into video now. So how to use video to create new ideas? You have to use digital media in an unconventional way. When you go to your Facebook feed, if you see the people content monotonous, people uh, post monotonous content, you need to understand, I have to do something different. That is how you use digital media in an unconventional way. Always think digital media is a thinking game. This is through my experience. Because you can do wonders with digital media if you think in the right way. So use digital media in an unconventional way. Then you get ideas to create videos. So that is how you use video to create new ideas. So the next point is think reverse. Get my point. I hope that you get my point. I have mentioned not negative. Reverse thinking is not thinking negative. Reverse thinking is a form of creativity that people use specifically or mainly in the advertising industry you may have seen so uh, i think we have a great network of people here today joined in this webinar so you have different experiences that we mingle with different cultures so i reckon that this is a great opportunity for us to get in touch with uh, each another uh, get in touch with each other to share our experiences, share the stories, uh, and listen to one story and think reverse. What would happen if this particular incident occurred in, 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 in this way? So you think reverse. So that is how you create content. And always relate to a story. Because when you relate to a story, it becomes emotional. Suppose that you find a video on social media which talks about an incident that you faced a week ago. Wouldn't you share it? That is what. That is why you need to relate it to a story. You have to relate it to a story, then you get more ideas to create videos. I specifically talk about videos because that's the way forward. I have experience of using video because I've been on TV for more than a decade. So 
I know the opportunity that it creates, but this is an unconventional way of thinking. So I thought of getting on video with my smartphone. So that's what you need to think. You have to relate your content to a story. Always select a unique topic to talk. Do not follow the others. Just think in another way, think differently, think innovatively, and select a unique topic to talk about. This is important. When you start a YouTube channel, now you say, you, you share it with your friends, and sometimes uh, your friends may say, how many subscribers do you have? So sometimes you're embarrassed to say the number of subscribers, which I am still, because I have around 60 subscribers for the entire year. But however, the opportunities that I got through doing it is immense. Opportunities that I got through are immense. So don't worry about the number of subscribers that you have. Start doing it. Pursue your passion, guys. That's what you need to do. So you have to pursue your passion. You can select a unique topic related to a story. Think reverse if you want to. Always use digital media in an unconventional way. Don't do what your friend does. Try to do it in a different way. So that's what, because I'm talking through my experience, because using video to create new ideas, the way forward, as I said earlier. So always remember, number of subscribers doesn't matter. Just keep on doing it. The only factor that you need to keep in mind, keep it at the back of your mind, be consistent. If you're doing it weekly, suppose that you're posting a video every Saturday, do it. Don't fail. Somehow, you have to post it on Saturday. So that is what, that is what we're talking about here, about consistency. So you need to understand that we use digital media in, a, in an unconventional way. Select a unique topic related to a story. Don't worry about the number of subscribers. All right, digital media gives you the opportunity. This is a very important opportunity which will give you huge amount of dividends when you go forward, creating cross-border relationships via digital media. So few factors that you need. Sometimes you may be shy, a bit reluctant to talk to people. Doesn't matter. You need to try it out. Because you have to get out of your comfort zone to grow, my friends. That's what you need to understand. You have to get off your comfort zone to grow. So get out of your comfort zone and create cross-border relationships. I reckon all of you may have done it by now, but this will be more important. Uh, I'm sharing my experience. Be unique. When you post unique content on social media, especially uh, platforms like LinkedIn, people tend to connect because most of the professionals are on LinkedIn. So when people see that you're innovative, then they try to connect, so which is good for you in the future, which will be immensely beneficial for you in the future. The next factor is you need to be confident. So confident comes with experience. If I'm not confident, how can I talk to you like this? This is what I have gained through my experience. So if you're a digital marketer for more than a decade, you know what I'm talking about. You know how to connect with people, mingle with each other. The same applies on the digital space. So you need to take off your fear, get off, get on social media, connect with people. Social media is all about connecting with people. Always be focused, be focused. Be focused on what your other friends on the profile, in the profile, are doing. Study what they're posting, what their interests are, because then you get an idea of what your audience is. Understanding your audience, my friends, is very important. You have to understand your audience. As digital marketers, I don't have to say this, but understanding your audience is of paramount importance when you create content and when you create engaging content, content which is shareable, you need to understand your audience. As I told you earlier, related to a story, make it interesting. Try to include the emotional ingredient into that story. Then your content will be shareable. Be analytical. What does this mean? You need to analyze what your friends post. Or what's your other, what your other connections post. So you analyze and then you engage them into your profile by letting them create content. 
view. So this is user generated content. I know you know what I'm talking about. So be analytical. Try to create that emotional aspect or talking about an interest, sports, entertainment, you name it. Now this is the important factor. Now all these ideas are there. So you, you may have ideas. Now if I say, if I ask you, can you give me some ideas to create a content, a piece of content should be shareable. So we have around, I think we have more than 20 here joined in the webinar. So if I get all of you to give ideas, what will happen next? Would the ideas work? Will the ideas work without getting them into action? Remember guys, ideas are easy, execution is hard. That's what you need to remember. Ideas are easy, execution is hard. How to get into action? What do you need? What do you need to get into action? It's about thinking for yourself about the benefits and what you will deliver to the society because what you Deliver to the society is the only thing that remains when you leave. Always leave a legacy behind, which is immaterial. That's what you need to remember. The good deeds that you committed, as I told you earlier, those are the things that will remain once you leave. The legacy that you leave would remain. But make sure that it is a great legacy. So what do you need to get into action? Now, we are in the digital era. We cannot find anyone who does not have a mobile phone, a smartphone, I mean. So what do you need to get into action? As far as I'm concerned, you need a phone with about 500% battery because we are always connected. As digital marketers, you know how connected we are. You need to be always connected. So you need a, a phone, a smartphone with about 500% battery. So that's it guys. Uh, that's a wrap on the presentation. So you can get in touch with me uh, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. And always uh, feel free to get on all these platforms. Uh, my WhatsApp number, you can get in touch with me. To wrap up, I would like to use my life philosophy. My philosophy in life is be an influencer, not an influencer. So what does this mean? When you are an influencer, you deliver something good to the people. You deliver something positive. Now what is an influencer? Influenza is a disease. So do you need diseases in the society? No. So always remember, do not be a pain to other people. So that's what I meant here. Be an influencer, not an influencer. Thank you very much once again for joining us in the presentation, sparing time to join with me. It's a great pleasure. I'm honored as well. So once again, I thank uh, Texelai Conference for giving me this opportunity. And the forum is now open for your question and questions. Thank you. Thank you, Sazanka, for the wonderful presentation on personal branding. Now, sir, please stay with us. We will go ahead and take some time for questions now. At least, yes. it's a time now. Type the questions in your chat box. Sazanka is ready to answer all your questions. Uh, I have questions from uh, Mr. Prabhakaran. He's asking, is the influencer marketing tool through which we can identify the leaders in our niche? Yes, it is. It is. Influencer marketing tool that you use can be utilized to identify the leaders in your niche. Uh, you need to understand is uh, about using the influencer marketing tool. So using an influencer marketing tool that you possess yeah, will give you great opportunity to connect with influencers and identify your niche. Because sometimes people in your network will help you to identify your niche. Sometimes people who study about you, as I talked earlier, 
who analyze what you what you post will help you to understand what you're good at. Sometimes you may not be able to do that, but your connections are keen on what you do. So always remember, when you carry yourself on digital media, carry yourself properly because your reputation, your image goes a long way. The next question is from Nilanga Pereira. Uh, what are the personal branding tools that you may recommend at our corporate life? So uh, the personal branding tools, as I mentioned, you don't need a separate tool. What you need is to get on social media in the correct way. If someone is posting negative content, I reckon, this is what I do, I reckon you should not comment or get engaged with it. You can, you can give your opinion, but yeah. But when it comes to personal branding, it's all about yourself. You have to display what you're doing, the good that you do. So you always remember when you use social media, personal branding, be very careful of what you post. Now suppose that you're looking for a job. You need to understand that the recruiters look at your social profiles. They will go to your social profiles and see what type of content this guy has posted. So you need to understand that what you post is beneficial for someone. You teach something through that content to your connections. So always remember that you use it in a mindful way. Thank you. Uh, then we move on to, there's another question from uh, Milanga Pereira. Is it, is it applicable in any field? And my focus is on a corporate scenario. Applicable in any field. When it comes to the corporate scenario, it depends on your, it depends on your values. Sometimes the corporate values, because you represent your organization. So, as I told you earlier, when whatever you post, because you have in your profile, sometimes you have in your profile which organization that you represent. So, when you post something on social media, if it is negative, a negative impression goes in turn to your organization as well. So, we need to be very careful when posting content, even in the corporate context. All right, thank you. Uh, we move on to, I think I answered Mr. Prabhakaran's question. Uh, Edita, I hope that I got your name correct. How to increase the subscribers in YouTube? Uh, increasing the subscribers in YouTube, uh, there are uh, certain ways that you can do it. Especially when it comes to, there are ways that you can get into agreement with uh, YouTube. I think uh, you should be able to uh, follow it on on, uh, on many platforms and get the details of it. So, as I told you earlier, you don't need to worry about the number of subscribers. But if you have, currently if you have more subscribers, that's fine. That's really great. If you don't have subscribers, that's great too. Because you need to pursue your passion. Because you're doing it for your personal branding. This one day, you will get an opportunity to do that. But keep going. You need to continue doing it. Don't worry about the number of subscribers. That's my advice to you. Don't worry about the number of subscribers. Because when I started, I also had the same pro issue. The same question that you asked. So then I realized, because people say, various uh, people give you various information regarding subscribers because then you find out that it's difficult and you can't figure out what you should do when it comes to subscribers so remember don't worry about the number of subscribers keep going do what you do at your best give you 100 percent over deliver you will see the results in the near future. All right? Then we move on to... Yes, Asanka. Actually, we have another question from Shaili. 
Where to build the community other than level one social media? Where to build the community other than level one social media? All right. So you need to you need to engage with people in different ways. I'm talking about offline now. So you go to events. There are networking events that you that you participate. So now see uh, when you when you become an influencer or a professional, you should have this in your system. It should be within your DNA to go and meet people. So once you go to that networking event, you should be confident. Remember I talked about confidence. So when you're creating that relationship, you should be confident. You go to him or her and without fear, you talk with her or him. So always remember that this would give you many opportunities. Now if you take my example, I'm a show host as well. So I go to events. That is a great opportunity for me to build my network. So this is out of level one social media. I'm talking about offline. So that's what your question refers to. So you need to talk to people. Be confident. There's nothing to be feared of. Go to them and talk to them. So that's how you create your community and make sure that you keep in touch with them on social media as well as offline. So that is my advice to you, uh, Shaili. Thanks for that question. Yes, uh, of course, a great answer by you. And we have got a comment from Vivini Italy, like just a comment. I totally agree with the networking idea. It's great and works very well. I have experienced that in my field. And we got one more appreciation from Nilanga Perera. Thank you, Mr. Sazan, for you. your valuable comments. Really appreciate. And uh, we have another one more question from Alison. Live video or recorded video, which do you recommend for quick success? Live video or recorded video? It depends. Uh, it depends. It depends on the platform. So if you're doing recorded video, I know that you know about this. Recorded video, the, the best platform is YouTube. If you're doing live video, now you know that you can go live on Facebook. But when you're going on Facebook live, it should be a continuous feed. You cannot record snippet or go live with snippets of videos. Now, suppose that you're at an event and you want to broadcast that event on Facebook Live in a way that people can see what you're streaming. But you shouldn't interrupt what they're seeing, what they're watching. So always understand when you're going live, keep it as a continuous feed. You go live and you keep it for about, suppose that it's for 30 minutes, so keep that streaming going and let your audience watch it without any interruption. And talking about recorded video, go on YouTube, record videos, put it on YouTube, and promote them on the other social networks that you have. So that is cross-promotion via the other social media of your YouTube content. I hope that you got the answer. Yes, Sazanka, we have last two more questions. All right. uh, the first question is right. uh, from Mr. Roy. Um, will all kind of emotional content help us add great following? Will all kind of emotional content? Uh, that's a good question. That's a very good question. This question is from Roy. Yeah, thank you very much, Roy, for that question. Emotional content, uh, not all types of emotional content. It depends on the situations that people have been in. So if it's a joyous moment, if you post something which has joy in it, then you will absolutely share it. Especially when you talk about content which include animals, which feature animals. Those are the most shareable content, in my opinion, as far as I'm concerned. So what you need to understand is that emotional content of any nature would not be successful on social media. So you need to be very careful when posting emotional content as well. That's why I told you that this is a very important question. Great question. Uh, be careful when you post emotional content. It can be happiness, it can be sorrow. Sometimes you give out a lesson 
or you deliver a message to the society in an emotional way. So that is what you need to understand when posting emotional content on social media. So always remember to use emotional content in a way that people do not get an get a negative impression on you. That is very important. Because we see we see a lot of people, plenty of people share content, emotional content. But it gives out a negative message to the society, delivers a negative message to the society. Because social media can build a society as well as destroy society. So keep this in mind. It is very important when you post emotional content. So thank you very much, Roy, once again for that question. Uh, I hope that you got my got the answer. Uh, yes, sir, Sanka, it was a wonderful answer by you. And we have another one question from Nilango Perara. Can you also advise how to sustain the personal brand image if you have already created it to a level and we have to treat it in the same way as a product? This is a good question too. Uh, personal brand, if you have already created it, it's a matter of uh, maintaining it. You have to maintain it. But if it is a negative image that you have created, you need to change now and make it positive. But if you have created a wonderful image among the society, keep going. Make sure that you post content of that nature regularly and provoke people to do, which is uh, do something good to the society. So always, it's very hard to get into a position where you create a credible, formidable personal brand, but maintaining it is even harder. So always remember, the same applies to a product as well. So the same applies to a product. If you're promoting a product which gives negative results to a society in terms of business, that can happen. But always remember, if you're an individual, make sure that you promote what is generous, what is positive, and what is useful for a society. Yeah. Okay. Next we have a question from Iftikar Anju. Should I focus on becoming more successful, accomplished, skilled and then start building my personal brand or I can start as a beginner? You have to start now. That's my advice. You have to start now. Now or never. Because we are living in an era where everything changes in split seconds. Now I spoke this, but it will change right now. So you have to start now. Remember guys, this is for everyone. It's good that he raised that question because in the next five to 10 years, sometimes if you're not ready for it, if you don't continuously learn, you won't have a job to do. You know about artificial intelligence. It will take over every industry. So always, that's why I told you to be innovative, creative, change your mindset to go that extra mile. Otherwise, you won't be able to survive. So if the car, you start now. Uh, that is my advice to you. Start doing it right now. Then you will build your personal brand and you will see the results. Without me saying what the results are, you will see the results in the near future. We have another one question, Mr. Sazanka from Vibini AD. How should we channel our learning? Are we supposed to be focused on your goals only are we both as intellectual person? It's like this. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, another good question. Uh, you need to, I talked about understanding, identifying your skills and passion. Guys, there is something called area of destiny. This is something which I found in a book. Uh, you can Google and check. AOD analysis, area of destiny. Uh, this was actually uh, mentioned in a book by uh, Jack Welch. You know who Jack Welch is, the former CEO of General Electric. So uh, he and his wife wrote a book called uh, The Real Life MBA. In that book, it says AOD, area of destiny analysis, is you have two highways. One has your skills and the other has your passions. So when these highways intersect, the point that intersects those two highways is where your career lies. 
So my answer to your question is you identify your skills, identify your passions, see where they meet and pursue a career in that, in that direction and then you will be able to find out what you need to learn. Then you can focus on it and achieve your goal. All right, it was a great answer by you, Sazanka. We have last question from Iftihar Anju. Right. How can I make my personal brand stand out if I'm not already super successful and well known? That's what that's what you need to uh, start personal branding now. You may be not uh, famous. It doesn't matter. It's not it's not becoming famous. People remember you for what you have done. That's what you have to understand. So always. I talked about delivering positive content, positive message to the society. So it doesn't matter whether you're famous or not. Any person can do personal branding. It's about marketing yourself. Guys, marketing yourself is of paramount importance because if you don't market yourself, the world would not know that you exist. So remember that you market yourself in a proper way, irrespective of whether you're famous or not. So don't worry. If you're not famous now, you will be famous in the future. Even if you're, you're not satisfied of becoming famous, keep on what you're doing. Keep on what you're doing. And pursue your passion. And create content so that people will share them and uh, talk about them and create that best impression for you in the digital space. I'll write Zazanka and Vivini Edi has appreciated you like thanks for your response and guidance. It's looked like we have covered all your questions attendees. It was a great session and thank you one second Zazanka. It was a wonderful presentation on personal branding by you. The session was very useful and informative. Thank you so much for spending your precious time with us and sharing your knowledge. We're very delighted with our presentation. Thank you so, so much. much. Uh, thanks again, Texila Conference, uh, for organizing this. And thank you very much for all of you, all the participants.